Well, it's a question of priorities. It's a question of priorities. And let me tell you that it starts at the young age. I was really lucky. Uh, at the age of seven years old, I found out something called Suzuki. Anyone here have a Suzuki kid or learn Suzuki as a child music? It was a great way to learn music, a fantastic way to learn music. And so um, when I was, you know, I benefited the fact that my school was offering Suzuki, but the fact is too many schools don't have that. A third of our schools don't have art teachers. More than half of our schools don't have music teachers. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. And the question now is, how can we actually find that? So you, again, you look at, at, at cities like Chicago, other cities, they're investing in these kinds of projects because they know that it is a priority that not only create creativity for the kids, nourish the creativity for the kids, but benefit the city as a whole. Well, Kurt, he stole your statistics. Uh, he, uh, he, he, Sorry. He's, he's <laughs> read the same briefing papers I have, I guess. But I, I am interested in, in given that, I, and I don't want to unfairly cast you as something, but to some degree, I think you're being cast as the, the, a Bloombergian. Uh, socially liberal with Suzuki training. <laughs> okay, there you go. With Suzuki. So, so you For all training. I know, he can play now, the violin. Now we are concerned about politicians fiddling around. So just ah, watch it. Good. Um, <laughs> but while while and and he is clearly in in his in many ways a great arts philanthropist, somebody who cares about arts. But interestingly and oddly and somewhat disturbingly, in the last his last two terms, really. The, the, the funding for arts education has, has been at best holding steady and in some way shockingly diminished. The, the, the budget for, here's a, here's a number, the budget for all art supplies, musical instruments, everything, has been cut to about $2 per kid per year. year. Yep. Down, uh, down from $65, where it used to be just so, about 10 years ago. So you've, you've committed to, to, to Leonard's proposal uh, to doubling, essentially, the public monies. For, I think I'm the first right now in this audience. For, to do for that. supporting a nonprofit cultural organization. Thank you. What do you do, what and how do you make sure there's a steady stream of financial support for arts education? Because it's always, and we're, we've seen in the last 10 years, the easiest to cut. Yeah. Well, it's the easiest to cut if you have the wrong priorities. It's the easiest to cut if that's not your priority. We did have $65 a student just 10 years ago. We are down to $2 a student. The question now is, what do we do about that? Do you just wave your hand and say, oh, I'm gonna restore $65 million. Where's it gonna come from? Let's take a step back a second. We are now teaching our kids right now in K through 12 in a system, in a program that goes back to the 18th century, maybe the 17th century. And I can tell you as somebody who's not only created businesses, created jobs, but also one of the companies I help grow is a company that connects people with jobs. I can tell you from that experience, the job market of today is not just looking for, oh, this guy got 100 on this and that, and this young lady got 100 on this and that. That's not what is required and looked for in today's market. It is creativity, it is problem solving, and team-based work. 